Hello, my name is Brandon Mako, and I have physician level certification in musculoskeletal ultrasound and I'm going to give a short review of the Clarius L15 HD3 handheld ultrasound transducer and I've been using it for uh, the past couple of years. Now when high quality handhelds are compared against cart based units uh, they seem to agree about 65% of the time in one study and in that study they found that the discrepancies rarely impacted management. The handheld uh, transducers, they found, you know, if a full rupture is a full rupture, whether it's cart based or whether it's handheld, they diagnose full rupture. Now, where these discrepancies are is you may have, you know, partial tear of supraspinatus and tendinosis of uh, mild tendinosis of uh, subscapularis. And maybe the person with the cart um, diagnosed, you know, small, you know, two millimeter partial tear of the subscapularis. Um, or maybe the tears were both identified, but maybe the cart uh, added in the diagnosis of uh, tendinosis. Uh, so in these subtle, you know, tendinosis cases, subtle, you know, tiny tear cases, um, there was some discrepancy, but that doesn't reflect um, in the management in that the management of these cases um, was going to be the same uh, regardless of whether they were following the handheld diagnosis or the cart-based diagnosis. And my personal experience, I agree. I find sometimes you end up with this sort of hypochoic fuzziness and you're, you're staring at, you know, is that a healing partial tear or is that just tendinosis? Um, and of course my report reflects uh, my uncertainty in those cases. Now, Clarius recommends the L7 for general purpose MSK. And despite not having any experience with the L7, I think I disagree. You lose out on some field of view with the L7, and you lose out on the higher detail for shallow structures like finger pulleys and the median nerve because the L15 has a higher maximum frequency. Going with the L15, you only really lose out on being able to scan the hip easily. I can still scan the hip, you know, the uh, greater trochanter. Um, but in a limited capacity, right, I, I have trouble getting deep enough to get the joint capsule, for example. And, uh, you know, some fat patients, fat, that's not very sensitive of me. Uh, um, depending on the habitus of the patient um, uh, determines whether I can scan the hip at all, basically. The other comparable handhelds uh, to the Claris lineup uh, like the GEV Scan Air and the Philips Lumify, uh, their linear transducers are similar to the L7 in terms of their footprint and frequency. I think for the majority of MSK purposes, you won't be disappointed with the images the L15 gives you. I don't think there's a handheld from another company that gives better images for depths less than four centimeters. Now on my wish list, um, I'd like to add a curvilinear transducer for the hip and for screening the abdominal aorta or, uh, you know, abdominal aortic aneurysms. And I think probably a curvilinear transducer would be more useful for the hip than the L7. Now, I know if I go Clarius for the curvilinear, um, Clarius will give me, you know, top tier images for a handheld, but there are reasons I'm considering switching to another brand. Now, the pricing I got on this unit is both great and awful. Now, you can see I spent $4,000, which includes the $600 per year subscription. This is an amazing initial price to be able to start offering ultrasound imaging scans. Um, now, you can see on my invoice, I purchased the fan attachment as the unit gets extremely hot within minutes. Um, I don't think I've needed the fan in the clinic. Uh, and there's, there's a good amount of time between patients as well to let it cool down. But in terms of studying and practicing, I definitely needed it because you only have minutes until it says, you know, it's overheating. 
Um, you can see I purchased that subscription and that subscription is basically required. Now I couldn't find the price on their website anymore, but when I purchased this, um, they had the software preset packages for $1,000 a piece. And I think they had eight or nine $1,000 packages that you could purchase. But even if you decided to purchase those packages, you still don't get all the features of the unit and the software. You don't get pulse wave Doppler. You don't get split screen. I use split screen all the time. Now it bothers me that features that would help in a diagnosis may be restricted because of a lack of subscription. This is like having anti-lock brakes for a car locked behind a subscription. The car has the capability, but you'll be in danger if you don't pay the subscription. Same thing with the subscription here. What happens if I make a misdiagnosis without access to split screen? The machine and the software have the capabilities. Just a $600 per year paywall restricts it. Also, um, the forced occasional updates will drive you crazy because it's always when you're in a rush to assess a patient that decides to update. Um, speaking of updating though, uh, the app is great. Um, one quirk of it though, is it requires location information for some reason. So I had purchased an iPad to plan to use with this and I couldn't use it because the iPad didn't have GPS. So I had to buy a new tablet with GPS just to meet this, this location requirement. The tablet I got was a Samsung Tab 6S Lite, uh, which seems to be a good partner for the unit. Yes, you can use your cell phone, uh, but I find the larger screen of the tablet uh, just easier to work with. Now, as I said, the app is great and it continuously gets improvements and updates. Uh, it now has uh, hands-free, so you can give it voice commands, uh, which is quite useful if you're doing interventional procedures. Uh, you can turn on needle mode by just saying, turn on needle mode. Um, it will now uh, even identify uh, certain structures on its own and take measurements of the thickness of those structures, um, like the patellar tendon. Uh, so software on the app, pretty good. Oh boy. I have huge frustrations with the cloud software. The cloud software has not been updated in the two years I've used the unit, and it is sorely lacking, which affects my workflow. You know, my workflow, I take the images, maybe I take a couple quick measurements in office, uh, and then I upload everything to the cloud. When I have time, I sit down, I fully annotate all the images, I take additional measurements, and I write up a report. The web software has very limited measurement options. For example, there's no cross-sectional area measurement available. And it, as, if you're in the know, if you want to diagnose a carpal tunnel syndrome, you need a cross-sectional area measurement of the median nerve at the wrist. And you just, I, I, need, I need to take that measurement um, in the app before uploading it to the cloud. Because once it's uploaded and once it's in the app, there's no way for me to take the measurement. Also, measurements taken in the cloud, let's say I do measure a thickness of something, they don't appear in the reports. Um, so you basically have to make sure you take all your measurements in the app before uploading it to the cloud. Uh, you also can't take images from a Cineclip in the cloud software. You can in the app, but if you, ha if you have you know, your 10 second video loop, you can't be like, oh yeah, that's the perfect image. I wanna take a picture of that to put in the report. Nope, uh, you need another piece of software to do that. Um, there's some software inconsistency too. Like for example, the date of birth requires a tab press from year to month, but not month to day. So it sort of messes with your expectations. The report text boxes respond inconsistently often not allowing you to click where you want to type. So you click, you know, let's say at the end of what you just wrote, and then all of a sudden your cursor will jump to the beginning of the box. Printing is unpredictable. You can select which images to appear in the report, but it seems like random chance whether that works. Also, sometimes the annotations are just missing. 
Um, now, maybe I'm just used to uh, radiograph and MRI software where I can adjust brightness and contrast to help with diagnosis. But if I want to do that with my ultrasound images, I have to bring the images into a different piece of software. You know, I, I love the scanner and the app works great. I interact with the cloud software a lot and the constant refreshing the page and trying the print button multiple times until it randomly decides to print with what I want on it is a little bit frustrating. So to summarize, again, I uh, love the app in the scanner. The unit is great um, for all nerve, muscle, joint, tendon, and ligament assessments, uh, except for the hip. I hate the subscription model and I think it's evil and the cloud software is a piece of crap. Now, I want more professionals to get into using point of care ultrasound. I've created my own educational program for MDs, DOs, PTs, and DCs. Um, I'm also open to receiving any questions about how to get started through email. I'd love to help you if you're, if you're curious. I think this stuff is the future, and I think it greatly benefits our patients.